NelsonTripod.com bringing you another original. It's fucking great. At E3 in 2014, during the Microsoft press conference, there were a few games that had my interest, but there was only one that captivated me. Ori and the Blind Forest was announced, and from that day to this, I wanted to get my hands on it. Well, I've played through Ori and the Blind Forest, and you know what they say, there's only one thing worse than not getting what you want, and that's getting it. First and foremost, Ori is an outstandingly captivating game. Its beautiful artwork and outstanding ambience is one of a kind. It's a truly beautiful game, the likes of which I've never seen. Moon Studios have created what is very possibly the most visually appealing game that has ever been made. In Ori and the Blind Forest, you play as a spirit creature, Ori, lost from its home as part of a great and mighty tree. Ori sets out on a quest to bring life back to the world. As far as the bare bones story goes, it's not unique. Hell, the last Inua and the last Tinker City of Colours had almost exactly the same plot last year, but Moon Studios have an edge on those games. Ori and the Blind Forest begins with a touching and heart-rending cutscene that shows Ori's entrance into the world of lush trees and bountiful harvests. It doesn't last long, and you soon see the world wither and die, including Ori's adopted mother. As introductions go, it's a hell of a good one, and it really set me up for the start of the game. As I began playing through the early stages of the game, I was impressed with the attention to detail and level design. It really is astounding, with creatures skulking around in the foreground, partially obscuring Ori as I ran along logs and cliffs. The problem with this design made itself apparent to me around three hours into the game. During one of the frequent fights, I wasn't able to see Ori, the enemy, or the enemy's projectiles, and this is when I started to get frustrated with this beautiful game. There are very few checkpoints in Ori in the Blind Forest, and it'll only save when you either unlock a new area or before a boss section. Ori doesn't have lives either, so when you die, it loads the last save. This can become annoying as hell when navigating through difficult sections of gameplay. What you need to do, to save yourself from the agony of playing the same section over and over, is manually save your game. Now that shouldn't be a problem in itself, but this mechanic uses the same energy as some of your attacks and the same energy that is required to open certain doors. A great deal of Ori in the Blind Forest is reliant on platforming, and anyone that's played games like this knows that you can flawlessly complete a tough section on your first run through, only to die immediately after and struggle to reach the same stage again. Don't get me wrong, the level design is fantastic. It has an open feel to it and the puzzle sections are engaging, but some of the sections just seemed excessive. Ori in the Blind Forest has a lovely progression and levelling system that is both easy to manage and simple to understand. As enemies are killed or you pick up items around the world, you'll unlock attribute points. These can be used to upgrade your abilities. Your primary abilities can only be unlocked at spirit trees. From these, Ori will take in the light of a spirit and learn its skill. You'll learn skills like double jump and wall climbing as well as other various attacks. There's plenty of skills that are unlocked to keep the gameplay fresh. I think my biggest problem with Ori in the Blind Forest lies with the control system. Some of the commands for your skills aren't great. For instance, I was climbing up a wall holding right trigger, and when I tried to move down the wall, instead of climbing down as I'd intended, Ori performed a slam attack that saw me hurl myself into a pit of spikes and thorns that immediately sent me to my death. The control system for me was just not up to the delicate task and precision for performing Ori's moves all of the time. The gameplay as a whole, while not revolutionary, was better than most. It merges puzzle, combat and platforming in a fantastic way. It's the most natural thing in the world to switch from dodging spikes and lasers to slamming a demented rhino. The problem comes as more abilities are unlocked and it becomes increasingly hard to get Ori to do what you want. Ori in the Blind Forest is a great experience, but it gets frustrating. Now I know I touched on this at the start of the review, but I would be remiss if I didn't mention the art style again. It's almost painfully pretty. I played Ori for hours and never got tired of the hauntingly beautiful and captivating look of the world. There's no real voice work in the game, apart from a narrator that sounds like Jabba the Hutt. However, I still knew exactly what Ori felt throughout the story. It's a heartbreakingly beautiful plot, 
And I, for one, think its execution is definitely worthy of recognition. The soundtrack that accompanies Ori in the Blind Forest is fantastic too. Moon Studios have done a great job at creating such an emotional world for Ori to travel through. I still get a tingle down my spine when I hear the soundtrack. To me, Ori in the Blind Forest represents something unique. It is a visual masterpiece and it has as an emotionally immersive ambience as I can possibly imagine. The progression system runs at an excellent rate and new abilities are given time to become familiar before any more are gained. It's a fantastically paced adventure when you're on a roll. When you hit your skill wall or a difficult section of gameplay, it soon becomes repetitive and annoying. The control system isn't up to scratch which can lead to more repetition. The inclusion of a manual save that uses the same energy as some of your attacks or to open certain doors makes frequent saves a luxury that you can ill afford. Ori in the Blind Forest is a true achievement in the visual and audio art. It has a uniqueness that will earn it renown, but it hides the same platforming skeletons as the rest of its kin. Ori in the Blind Forest is a game that I believe to be unique. It is an absolute treasure to look at and it has a soundtrack that is exemplary. The gameplay sections fuse well together and the story is one of heartache and hope. Ori and the Blind Forest's great look hides some basic problems with the controls. The control issues and frequent repetition caused me a lot of frustration, but I would still recommend Ori and the Blind Forest. It's not a perfect game, but it does deserve your interest.